Hello everyone, uh, it's Mr. Quick here. I'm going to take you through uh, cook along today making a apple pie. Um, so I'm actually going to be making an apple and blackberry pie but if you don't want to add blackberries that's absolutely fine. You could add another berry of your choice or it could just be uh, an apple pie. Um, so I'm going to get myself ready to cook. Um, I've got my apron on, um, I've got my area cleaned and everything prepped ready to go. I'm now going to just preheat my oven to 180 degrees and I'm going to wash my hands and then I'll get started. Uh, the rest of the practical I'm going to show you under the visualizer, um, so I'll take you over to that now. Hello everyone, so um, I've preheated my oven to 180 degrees, uh, it's a fan oven. Um, and I've washed my hands, so I'm now ready to go. I'm um, just going to say that on your PowerPoint, um, you should have a copy of the written instructions. I've actually printed it out. Um, but obviously, if you don't have a printer, you could just have um, maybe a, a smartphone or a tablet with the instructions on there just to guide you along um, whilst you're making it. So, um, first thing, one of the first things I've done is get my equipment ready. So I've got my chopping board here, which you can see, uh, my sharp knife, I've got a peeler. I've actually got two different types of peeler. Um, I'll show you and talk you through those in a minute. Uh, I've got a, a nice large saucepan. I have an oven proof dish or an oven proof tray, sorry, metal tray. I've got a bowl that I'm going to actually put my um, peelings in just to keep tidy and uh, some cutlery here so a teaspoon and a fork and I've also got um, a pie dish now um, I'm actually going to split this into two smaller pies um, which you could do as well if you wanted to at home um, or you could just make one big one for your family so um, I'm going to eat this uh, in two lots, so I'm going to make two smaller ones. Okay, and then I've also prepped my ingredients. So it's a good idea to always get yourself prepared first before you start cooking. So I've weighed my flour, so I've got 350 grams of plain flour, 50 grams of icing sugar. So 175 grams of butter. Now you can see here, this is a quite important part of this. So um, we for our pastry today, we need to be using hard uh, a, a cubed butter. So um, not margarine, okay? It is doable, but it's much easier to work with um, a hard block butter for your pastry. I've got an egg there, which I'm going to put the yolk into my pastry. And 50 mils of milk. I've also prepared my filling ingredients. So I have my apples and my blackberries. These blackberries are frozen. Um, so I've got 150 grams there of frozen blackberries. As I said, you don't have to add the blackberries. Um, optional and then I've got my apples so I've got two Bramley apples which are big cooking apples and then I've got four Fox's apples and lastly a hundred grams of caster sugar which is going to sweeten my filling okay so first thing we're going to do is make our pastry so I'll just move the chopping board out of the way so I've got my flour in there and just to speed this up a little bit I've cut up majority of the butter so one of the first things you're going to need to do is cube your butter this is going to make it easier to rub in when we're we're, we're putting it into the page or into the flour so we're just I'm just using a butter knife there to cut that up so I've cut all that butter up now that might take you a little bit longer. Um, and then that's going to go into my flour. 
Now at home, you could actually, if you have one, you could use a food processor. You'd need quite a large food processor to do this. Um, but if you just blitz the, the flour and the butter together on your, uh, in your food processor, you'll, you'll find that that will make this a, a lot quicker. Um, but we're going to go for the traditional way. So uh, we're going to be rubbing in. So it's going to take some time. I'm just going to remove my watch to do that. Um, and we're going to rub this in. So what we're looking to do, first of all, is break down the lumps of butter. So what I'm doing is um, imagine you're opening a deck of cards. So we're going to spread the butter in the flour. So breaking down those big lumps, not that easy to see on the visualizer, but hopefully you get the idea of what I'm doing. What I'm breaking up these cubes of butter. Um, this butter is quite hard, so it does take a little bit of time to get started. So it will take you a minute or two to do this. Just keep working through breaking down the big lumps of butter and rubbing them in, into the flour. So we call this a rubbing in method. And you'll know when it's done because you'll get rid of all of the lumps and you'll end up with something that looks like breadcrumbs. I'll show you that in a minute. So one good point to mention on pastry making is that pastry doesn't like to be hot. Okay, you should imagine there's quite a lot of fat. So we've got half the fat to flour. So there's double the amount of flour than there is fat. Um, so what I don't want to do is get that too hot. So what I'm trying to do is avoid using my palms. So I'm just using my fingertips and my thumbs to rub this in. find those big lumps and break those up. Little tip here, um, shake the bowl from side to side, give it a shake and the lumps will come to the top. That just makes it easier. Okay, once I've broken those down, I actually kind of change method a little bit. Uh, it's just something that I find easier. So what I'm going to do now is bring those lumps into my fingers and rub them together. So it's rock solid. And this is kind of why, if you've got a um, food processor, it can be much, much quicker to do it in that. Right, I'm gonna, um, I'm actually gonna pause this uh, just cause it's gonna take a couple of minutes. I will pause it and then I'll come back to you uh, when I nearly finished.
Okay, so um, I think we're finally there. I've got a, a couple of small lumps there. Just again, do that little trick there. Hold your bowl carefully. Give it a shake. Uh, that'll bring the lumps to the top. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have some small lumps, but as long as the majority of it is rubbed in, and it should resemble breadcrumbs. So, okay. So I'm now gonna uh, wash my hands, ready for the next part. Be back in. Okay, so hands washed. Um, next thing I'm going to do is to stir in icing. So 50 grams of icing sugar. It's going to just sweeten up the, the pastry. If you've got um, ice and sugar at home that's gone a bit hard or lumpy then you might just want to sieve that in stir that in right and next thing i'm going to do is to add in my egg yolk so Okay, when you do this, I need that out of shot. Um, so carefully split your egg, preferably half, um, and then without bursting the yolk, pass it back and forth from one side to the other. And you should find that the white will drop away, he says. Okay, so now we've got our egg yolk. And go in. So I've dropped my egg yolk in. It's just going to enrich my pastry. Okay, and then next thing I'm going to add is my milk. So I'm going to add a tablespoon. I'm going to add two tablespoons to start, and then I can always add some more. Um, for this, I actually use a knife, so I'm going to cut that liquid in, giving it a mix. Just fine at this point. It keeps our hands out of it, which... ...stops the pastry from getting too hot. Okay, and you'll see it start to stick together a little bit. Now, one of the things that I can do here is just pinch a bit of the dough. And if it sticks together, then it's probably got enough liquid in. As you can see, this is still very crumbly. So I'm going to need to add in uh, a couple of extra tablespoons of milk. So if yours sticks together a little bit, then you might have only want to add one there, but mine was very dry. Okay, 
And it's important to get it the right consistency because otherwise it won't roll out. So if it's crumbly, it will fall apart as I'm rolling it out. Um, if it's too sticky, it's going to stick to the surface when I'm rolling it out. So I can tell that that is starting to stick together, but still a little bit too crumbly for me. So I'm going to add my last two. So that's actually my 50 mils got in there now. I'm hoping that should be enough. So. And you can see visually, probably under the visualizer, that that is changing sort of textures there. So starting to clump together. Trying to mix it, make sure I'm getting right the way around. Probably could have used a bigger bowl than I did. Um, right. So if I pinch that together, that's forming uh, a, a nice soft dough. So this is probably quite a difficult bit here. We're going to squeeze start squashing and squeezing the dough together so what i'm doing here obviously unlike bread dough we're, we don't want to handle it too much but we need that dough to come together so we're getting a tiny bit of heat into it um, just to form form it into our dough but uh, i don't want to overwork it So I'm just squashing it in, turning it, making sure it's all picking up and pretty much there. I'm going to then just pop it out into my clean work surface and just give it a quick 30 second Okay, so that is our pastry dough. Happy with that. So I um, don't want to work that any more than that. So that's literally 30 seconds. Next thing I need to do is I'm going to leave my, my dough to rest in the fridge. So I'm going to wrap it in cling film and put it into the fridge. Um, I'll just go and get some cling film. Okay, so that's um, wrapped in cling film now. I'm going to rest it in the fridge for about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, that's just going to relax the gluten okay, um, in, in the flour and, and give me a nicer texture for my pastry. Okay, so that's going into the fridge. I will stop. Right, so um, my... My pastry is now resting in the fridge. Whilst it's resting, I'm going to prepare my filling. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to do that. I've also wiped down my work surface and washed my hands as well. So you could do that before you get ready to go. Uh, I'm just going to show you, first of all, how to um, peel, your apple, peel your apples. So um, this is my preferred type of peeler. Um, I hold in there and I use my thumb uh, just to peel and I'll work my way around. I normally try and challenge myself to go and peel this in one go if I can. Um, some of you probably aren't as sad as me and enjoy doing that, but um, Okay. 
so that goes into a pot. I'm just going to take off the last bit. Not too worried about the top. I'll show you why in a minute, but um, I won't get all of that just because of the way it's the shape of the apple. Uh, and I'll repeat on the other side. Okay, um, don't worry too much about these bruises here. And um, I mean, you could cut them away and I'm not too worried about them. Uh, repeat on the um, pots of apples as well. I'm just gonna show you two, the two different types and how I'll peel them and cut them. Um, I'm gonna show you the other peeler as well. So you might find this peeler a little bit easier. Just watch your fingers with these if you have a style of this style of peeler. Um, but one of the problems is the peel gets stuck. But it's a good idea to have a like a tray if you've got one or pot full of peelings to go in. Just to keep things nice and tidy. And try not to spill any on the floor because it could be a bit of a trip hazard. Okay, so I've now peeled, I re removed the peel, put that into my bowl. That could go straight into your food waste bin if you have one at home. Right, so I will show you my apple first. So if we remember our bridge and claw cutting technique, so I'm gonna bridge over the top. So I've got formed a bridge in this shape over the top of the apple and I'm going to cut that in half so I've gone down through the middle of the core um, I'm going to place the apple on the flat edge now you don't know how easy this is to see but I'm actually going to cut through the middle of the core again so I need to look where the core is and cut through the core um, repeat on the other side cut through the core Okay, and then from there, uh, I'm going to carefully, this bit is a little bit tricky, but carefully cut the core away. Okay, at an angle there, so 45 degree angle. Cut the core away, and dispose of that. Repeat on the other side. So you could peel all of your apples in one go. I'm, I'm just going to show you just to speed up my, my video, really, just so you don't have to be watching for um, so long. So I've cut away the core of my bits of apple here, and now I'm going to slice them. So this is where I'm using my second cutting technique. I'm actually going to use a claw grip to cut the apples into slices. OK, so I've cut them into slices here. And I'm going to put mine directly into my saucepan, ready to go. If you take a bit of time cutting, okay, and you, you, you know, you might want to put them into cold water, into a bowl of cold water, just to prevent that oxidization and stop them going brown. Um, but I'm going to go straight into my saucepan. Okay, and I'll just show you on the Bramley apple. Um, be careful with this one. You will need a sharp knife or, or maybe a parent to help you again. Bridge over the top, cut through the core. Turn it over onto the flat edge and repeat again. Exactly the same as we did with the Cox's apple. And same process, we're gonna cut the core away at an angle. So we'll do that on. Okay, and then I repeat that. Now, obviously the Bramley apples are slightly bigger, so I'll probably get more slices of the apple. Um, at this point, I'd say it's 
probably a good idea to flip it onto the flat edge. Um, we don't want people cutting themselves and, and usually um, it's when it's, they're trying to cut something that's unsteady on the board. So move it around to make sure it's got a flat-ish edge on the board. Go straight into okay. So you notice how my fingers here are angled back a little bit in a claw shape, and that's just to protect my fingertips. Right, so I've, I've made a start there. I've only done um, two of my apples. So um, what I'll do now is pause the video. I'll quickly peel and cut the rest of them and then I'll join you back when I've finished. Right, so you would join me. I've, um, I've actually moved the visualizer now to the hob. Um, and I've got the hob on here. And I've got the apples, all of the apples now cut and in the pan. I'm not going to, I haven't put anything else in the pan here, it's just my apples. Um, if you put them in water, then obviously um, make sure you drain that water off. But I'm just going to cook these apples and stew them down for a couple of minutes. Now, what I'm not going to do is cook them to the point that I've lost all of the texture and it's gone to an apple puree. Um, but I just want to soften them um, a little bit just to make sure that that filling is going to be cooked. So I've got a, a, I'm going to turn that down one. So a medium heat here, and my hot goes up to the six. I've got it on four now. Keep moving them because what you'll find out is the ones at the bottom will be in contact with the heat. Be stewing down nicely, and the, the ones above that won't be doing much. I've also got my other things to hand that I'm going to need. So I've got my cinnamon here ready to go. And add a teaspoon of that. I've got my sugar, caster sugar, um, and I've got my blackberries here that are all to hand. Um, you'll notice that I've got the pan handle to the side. This is actually the side of the hob here. So I've got it to the side so I can deep hold it as I'm stirring. So I'm keeping an eye on the apples. I don't know how clear it is on the visualizer, but I'm just seeing it's starting to soften a little bit around the edges, and that's what I'm looking for. So, as I said, I want them to maintain their sort of fight, um, but, but I don't want them to be coming quickly when they're hard. So, just softening them, softening them out a little bit all the time to try and look and see the bottom of the pan as I'm stirring and that way I can see that nothing's burning or sticking to the bottom.
Okay, so these apples have now had about five minutes, and I'm going to turn that one right down, so the hog's now down on one, and I'm going to add in my cinnamon, first of all, so I've got a nice teaspoon of cinnamon, sprinkle that in, that was delightful, and I'm going to add in my 100 grams of caster sugar, And that route, 150 grams per burger. And all I'm going to do now is carefully dip that and mix together. Okay. So we're going to remove that from the heat and allow those to cool down. So they've come off of the, the hot pot and the hot air and I'm going to just leave them in the bag. You can use them straight from the air and just try and smell it. Uh, I don't want them uh, to be done. I want to work well, but um, I leave mine on the Okay. Right, so the next part now um, is to roll out the pastry. So I'm going to pause. Right, so um, one of the main things that I forgot to mention equipment wise is I need my rolling pin obviously to roll out my pastry. Um, I've collected my pastry from the fridge. That's had um, about 20 minutes there in the, the fridge just to rest. So I'm going to remove the cling film. Now, because I'm making two smaller pies, um, I'm actually going to cut my pastry into four bits. But if you're making one big pie, then just cut your pastry in half. So I'm going to go. Into four. Now, I've deliberately. And you might want to do this as well. I've deliberately made these two a slightly smaller because they'll be for the top um, and these two bits will be for the bottom. So I'm just going to show you one first of all. Okay, so first thing I'm going to roll out is the, the bottom. So I'm going to dust the worktop with some flour. You might have a flour shaker um, or you can just pinch some out of the bag and, and carefully dust that over. Um, Okay, and then with my rolling pin, I'm going to start rolling. So to start with, not applying too much pressure, just gently easing it out. So turn it 90 degrees, roll again. Turn. If it's sticking to your rolling pin slightly, a little bit of flour. Mine's not too bad, but um, in case yours is a bit. Once you get it to a reasonable size, just move. Okay. 
probably then not such an important thing to move it. Okay, so is that going to be big enough to get in there? Right, so if you see here, I'm just testing on my dish just to see if I think that's going to be big enough to get up the sides of the dish. Just a bit worried about this corner here where I rolled it in a slightly peculiar shape. Okay, right, I think I can work with that. Probably can't go a lot thinner than that. Okay, so little tip here i want to get my pastry onto my dish now so i'm going to roll the pastry over the rolling pin like that i'm going to bring my dish into where i want it and then at this point i'm going to unroll the pastry over and gone so there we go. Next thing I'm going to do is carefully, so I'm using the inside of my finger here just to gently lift and push. And then I can just trim around the edges, just so a little bit of a sawing motion. Keep that pastry because I might use that for decoration. Okay, so there's my dish lined, bit of a fold there. If you have any holes, then you can patch those up. It's not a problem. Um, just break off a bit of your pastry and, and patch up any holes. Okay, so here we have the filling. So I'm gonna just in some of my filling so remember i'm doing two so i'm gonna split this So you notice I'm putting quite a bit in because um, as this cooks, it's going to reduce the apples will cook down a little bit and it will reduce in volume there, probably about half.
Okay, so now we just need to roll out the lid. Now I'm going to keep these um, bits of offcuts. I'm going to show you. So I'm going to place that to one side. Again, a bit of flour on the worktop. And where it's been in the fridge, it's a little bit cold, so I'm just going to bring it into a, a ball. flour on top. Okay, right, so I've got that pastry roll. What I am going to do um, is just make my egg wash. Oh, that reminds me, I'm going to need a pastry brush. So I'm going to crack my second egg. So you should have had two eggs on the ingredients list. The, the, this one's going to be for our egg wash. And I'm just going to take my fork and just beat that egg there. Do that. Okay, right, um, I'll just show you what I'm doing here. Just gonna, not go too heavy, but just a light bit of egg around the edge. Pastry. That's just going to hopefully help it seal. So now I'm going to roll up my pastry again. Hopefully I've got the right size. giving that a bit of a squash down and then repeat my process of cutting Okay, so there we have it. That's our pie covered. I'm gonna put, it's important to put a hole in the top just to allow the steam to escape. And I'm also gonna use my fork just to put a, or push the edges together. Now you could do this um, and create a pattern. So on the PowerPoint, I've given you some ideas of what you could do. You could spend a little bit more time uh, creating a pattern on your pie. Um, 
just going to show you a reasonably quick way of doing it. But it'd be good to see anybody's designs if you've done something a little bit more elaborate. Okay, and then I'm just going to use my one of my offcuts here just to create a couple of leaves. So I will take a round cutter Okay, and then I want my egg wash. I'm just going to apply my egg wash all over my pie. So our egg wash is just what we're doing here is glazing. Uh, and this is going to give a nice golden colour to the pie when it's cooked in the other oven either. And then finally now obviously you, you can do as I've said something a bit more Okay, so that's our finished pie. Now, what I would do now, obviously I've got one more to do, which I'm not going to show you. I'll show you the end product, but um, I'm going to place it onto my place it onto my metal tray here, so that I can um, take it in and out of the oven a bit easier. Okay, so. Um, that's going to take um, half an hour in the oven to cook at 180 degrees. So, um, yeah, I'll show you it when it's done. Okay, so here's the second pie all done. So I'm going to put them in the oven now for half an hour, and then I will show you them when they're finished. Okay, so here they are, uh, 30 minutes in the oven. Um, you just notice the pastry as it's cooked has shrunk a little bit, but um, yeah, pretty happy with that. So now you would just serve that with some, some cream or some ice cream even, or some custard. Um, there you go, so that's the apple pie.